There are many windows on Antigua and Barbuda. Most significant are the windows to our past, our heritage. When we look through these windows, we can interpret our history. The city, dockyard, sugar estates, and archaeological sites offer an opportunity for us to observe and learn about ourselves. Embark upon this incredible journey of self-discovery through our heritage windows. Stepping back in time often means making archaeological discoveries. Some of the most important discoveries about Antigua's past were uncovered at Indian Creek Village, an internationally known prehistoric archaeological site located on the southeast end of the island. It was discovered that Amerindians from South America settled in this valley. They lived off the land, eating mostly cassava root and seafood. Clues to their way of life were discovered during an archaeological excavation. The Amerindians' lifestyle has been interpreted at the Museum of Antigua and Barbuda. Only 1% of the Indian Creek site has been excavated. The rest has been left for Antiguan archaeologists and for more advanced archaeological methods. The site is now heavily overgrown with thick spiny acacia and well hidden from vandals. The windmills on Betty's Hope Estate are the only twin towers still standing on Antigua. From its early beginnings in the 17th century, Betty's Hope was Antigua's pioneer sugar plantation. And for almost 300 years, it was owned by the Codrington family. Betty's Hope served as a center of government for the British West Indies, with Christopher Codrington II and III serving as governors. Like other large plantations, it was managed by European overseers, while hundreds of Africans lived out their lives as slaves. Betty's Hope stopped processing sugar in 1921, and in 1944, the land was sold to the Antigua Sugar Estates Limited. A private non-profit trust was formed in 1990 to direct the restoration of Betty's Hope as an open-air museum and interpretation center for Antiguan history. One of the mills has been restored and is functioning, making it the only working sugar mill in the Leeward Islands. There are also plans to restore all the major buildings and establish an exhibit of a slave village. Today, tourists drop in on the visitor's center to learn about life on the plantation 200 years ago. Wattle and Dab huts were constructed by slaves out of mangrove branches, which were woven into a structure and then cemented together with a mud and dung mixture. Even after emancipation and well into the 1940s, the people's rural cottages were made of wattle and dab, woven sticks, plastered with mud and roofed with cane thrash. This was the view of cottages on Tomlinson Road. 
It was not unusual for a family of six to eight to live in these cramped one-room dwellings with a dirt floor. When two hurricanes ravaged Antigua in 1951, most of the Watlandab cottages were destroyed. Today, the cottages are reconstructed as tourist attractions and educational tools. The dockyard at English Harbor is an important monument to Antigua and Barbuda's maritime heritage. Built in 1725 as a careening station and hurricane refuge, the dockyard was the principal British naval repair station in the Eastern Caribbean. It played an important role in the Seven Year War and was later named after Admiral Lord Nelson. In 1906, the naval yard was handed over to the Antigua government and restoration began in the 1930s. The harbor is now used by private sailing yachts. Many of the buildings help serve those that are based in English and Falmouth harbors. It also serves as a tourist attraction. Nelson's Dockyard National Park has taken on a new dimension. is a large military complex spread over the hills to the east of English Harbor. Its function was to protect the naval yard as well as to serve as a holding area for military units. It was named after Major General Sir Thomas Shirley, Governor of the Leeward Islands. He was responsible for the establishment of the military complex. The three main sectors of the complex, Fort Shirley, the Ridge and the Blockhouse, are presently scattered with ruins. The lookout is the most southerly point of Antigua. This battery of four cannons had the most commanding view and covered the entrance to English Harbor. The highest point on Shirley Heights was the signal station. Two flagstaffs were used to send signal codes, enabling all the forts around the coast of Antigua to communicate with each other. One flagstaff was used for flying the British colors, while the other was used for signaling. The architectural evolution of St. John's closely mimicked what historians call the three periods of Caribbean development colonization, maturity and wealth, and the period of decline. There are many structures existing from the period of maturity and wealth. The townhouses, for example, were owned by the plantocracy. The houses were used as overnight residences by the plantation owners, who after a day in the city, preferred not to take a two-hour horse and buggy ride to a distant estate. In the 18th century, wood was the most common construction material. These homes emulated the fashions of England and the typical architectural style at the time was Georgian. The design was simple with strong symmetry. This made it easy to spot a Georgian structure. The hip roof, the symmetrical facade, the clapboard sidings and the regularly spaced windows with shutters. By the latter part of the 18th century, the townhouses had stone and brick ground floors. The masonry ground floors were used as cellars and storerooms. The upper structure remained wooden with stairs leading to the living quarters above.
Majestic and awe-inspiring, the St. John's Anglican Cathedral, which dominates the city from a hilltop position, is the perfect example of romantic architecture. It is seen as the revival of classical, Gothic, and Renaissance styles. The cathedral is built with freestone, a fine grained stone which is easy to work with and readily available on Antigua in the form of a granular limestone. While the structure appears to be made of stone on the outside, the interior is actually encased in pitch pine. This was to secure the building and congregation during earthquakes and hurricanes. The twin towers, which are 70 feet high, are distinctly European. The rounded domes, which crown the towers, have a metal roof. The signature home of the 19th century was dubbed the gingerbread. It is characteristic of Victorian architecture, extremely decorative with ornamental fretwork and a gable roof. A Victorian home also showcases various elements of style. and 19th century buildings which were modified to meet local needs are called vernacular. The structures were often a mixture of Georgian and Victorian styles with the introduction of a veranda. After the abolition of slavery, many ex-slaves moved into St. John's. They constructed small wooden homes built on a platform of random rubble stone. The cottages had a central double door with a window on either side. These typical West Indian cottages are quickly disappearing. Moving into the 20th century, the architecture of Western Europe took over the city of St. John's. This international style introduced the widespread use of concrete and corrugated metal roofing. Most of the newer commercial buildings in St. John's are designed in this style. Barbuda lies about 25 miles north of its sister island Antigua. There are 146 recorded shipwrecks off the coast of Barbuda. The first, recorded in 1695, was a Spanish ship carrying 13,000 pesos. The coins were recovered at the time. The last and largest wreck took place in 1927, when a cargo ship was left stranded. Strategically placed to spot incoming and wrecked ships was the Martello Tower. The tower, which stood 56 feet, was positioned on the highest point in the southern part of Barbuda. It served as a lookout and a last place of refuge. The tower was modeled after the tower of Cape Martello in Corsica. There are plans to convert the historic site into a museum for Barbuda. Darby's Cave can be considered one of the natural wonders of Barbuda. It is best described as a vertical sided sinkhole. The huge cavern is lush with vegetation, with palmetto palm trees growing to over 50 feet. Filled with trees, ferns and birds, the damp clustered scene resembles a rainforest. Another natural wonder is Dark Cave situated in the Barbuda Highlands. 
This cave with its narrow slit entrance opens up into a large cavern which descends to about 400 feet. In this cave are fruit-eating bats and a series of freshwater pools stretching back into the darkness. hope that these landmarks all serve as guides for further exploration and mark the path of the forces that have shaped Antigua and Barbuda. <laughs>